What's up, sons? It's Blind Run with Son of the Tech. Once again, today we're going to be taking a look at Coffee Lake and the rumored pricing that was leaked over in Canada and then converted to US dollars. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. Along with, of course, we're going to be taking a look at the core counts and clock speeds of these new processors. So stick around. To start things off, to get you into the new Coffee Lake line, you're going to be talking about picking up a new motherboard that has been confirmed, as well as you're going to be needing to spend about $119 on the entry level 8100. Now, if we're to believe anything from Intel's history, this proc will not be overclockable. Its bigger brother, though, is going to be a pretty hefty bump up at $185, and that will get you an overclockable quad core or true quad core chip if we are to believe everything that we are hearing here. Now that's a pretty big bump. That's about a $65 jump and that's going to be kind of hard sell to go from a $120 proc to you know being able to get overclocking for an extra $65. At this price point I think Ryzen is still going to be the king. The R3 1200 and 1300 X are just too hard to beat there. Even if you consider that, yes, the 8350K, you're going to be able to overclock to probably 5 gigahertz. Even at that, you're still talking about above the 1300X, you're talking about still another 50 to 55 bucks. But things do get better with the i5 as we are looking now at 6 cores. And there's supposed to be 6 cores without hyper-threading, which sounds odd at first, but makes sense once you see the i7. And in this case, we're going to be seeing an entry point of $189 for the 8400, which of course, non-overclockable. To get the overclocking though, you are going to be looking at a pretty big price bump again, all the way up to $269 for the 8600K. This is quite surprising, and you do also get a 200 megahertz boost or turbo boost on top of that which would probably completely go away if you could overclock the 8400, but that won't happen. The TDP is also going to be bumped up to 95 watts, not too unheard of there, but that's what we're seeing. And the boost on that is 4.1 gigahertz to clarify. Now the i7s are interesting because not only do they get hyper threading, but they are rumored to get another 200 megahertz boost over the 8600K, and that's even the non-overclockable 8700, which entry price point's gonna be around $820. Now, if you wanna pay another 60 bucks, you can go ahead and get the overclockable version of this, and the turbo boost the clock is the same, but the base clock is supposed to be 300 megahertz higher. I'm not sure what's going on there, especially just considering that that seems just odd. The only reason for this that I can tell is that they're saying that the 8700K is going to be a 95 watt part and the non overclockable 8700 is just going to be a 65 watt part. So I'm assuming to hit that TDP, it has a lower base clock. Now all that's well and good. How much or performance gain are we really looking at here? Well, for the 8700K, which is a six core 12 thread proc, they're saying that over Skylake, we're looking at 11% in single threaded and a 51% gain in multi-threaded. If you take into account the overclocking kind of stats, let's see, the 8700K I was hitting, pro or the 7700K I was probably hitting about 1120 on Cinebench. So if we did a 50% gain in that, let's just be on the friendly side and say another 600 points there, you would be looking at going from an 1120 to about a 1720, which would bit you on par with an 1800X, at least until you start overclocking that 1800X from, of course, AMD team, in which case you can break 1800 quite easily. Now, uh, we'll just have to see what happens and see how well these chips overclock, but it is nice to see a top tier Intel consumer chip have more than four cores and more than eight threads. So I'm excited to see that. The pricing looks right on par with previous generations. This will be the largest jump in, I guess, uh, performance that we've seen from Intel in quite some time, where in the past we've seen an overall improvement of about 15% and 15%. If this is true, 
we're gonna get a much larger improvement, but most of that's due to just more cores and more threads. So I wouldn't see anything changing significantly for single threaded applications, unfortunately. We're still only gonna be seeing that 10 to 15% gain in single threaded applications. What this really shows is that we finally have competition back in the CPU market that is pushing Intel to add more cores. It's not really pushing the R&D for the single threaded applications on Intel side, but it is pushing them to add more cores and that's about all I have to say. If you're looking at the top end market as well, I mean, I think for consumers between Ryzen and what's been announced from Intel so far, because of the great, the two extra cores and four extra threads of the Ryzen 7 1700 through 1800X, that still is probably a more advisable option unless you're going for pure single threaded performance and you want the highest frame rates, then of course looking at this would be awesome. Now personally I've been running a 6800K for quite some time now and having six cores, 12 threads, seems to be a very happy medium. Of course, the 1600 from Ryzen is a lot more attractive than the 6800K, but my point being is six cores, 12 threads for a consumer rig, if you're a live streamer content creator, is about a good sweet spot. I can do H.264 live streaming while playing some pretty demanding games like Deus Ex Mankind Divided and have very little trouble with chat open and other applications like Discord, etc. So that's kind of my thoughts on this whole thing. Let me know what you guys think of Coffee Lake in the description below. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I will see you next Tuesday.